I'm Pastor Jim Vadas. Welcome to worship here at Saddlebrook. Glad that you chose to be here today. Uh, it's been an interesting week where we sent a satellite 300 million miles to Mars and landed it. And Dallas, Texas had one below zero. So if you had family, relatives, friends, or acquaintances in Texas, they've been having a hard week. So we hope you've had a good week, and it's great to be here. The uh, liturgy for today is printed in the bulletin, and I encourage you to follow along. We remain seated throughout the whole service, um, and we uh, begin now with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, whose Son fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, but did not sin, Give us grace to discipline ourselves in submission to your spirit, that as you know our weakness, so we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The first reading is from Psalm 25. Please read responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me, for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel is from Mark chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Christ. I thought today we'd start by playing Jeopardy. You remember Jeopardy? I'll give you the answer, and you have to come up with the question. Now, the answer is 704. Any idea what the question might be? Well, I'm going to do something that Jeopardy never did. That is, give you a clue. Okay. And um, the clue is going to come from uh, a, ch a children's song. Now, uh, I have to explain. When I went to Sunday school, I went to Sunday school with the uh, Germans. Uh, they, were, they took me in, and I was very happy to be there. And you'll notice when... Uh, I wish we could take our masks off and sing this. I know we can't do that. It's illegal, but uh, we... Uh, in my, in my bringing up, we didn't sing happy, fast songs. And this is kind of a happy, fast song 
But you'll notice the German influence in, in this. And um, uh, some of you have had this, this song, I think, in your background. So it'll be familiar. Uh, let's see. It starts off. Oh. Anybody remember that old show where you could you uh, could 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 you name that tune in one note? <laughs> that didn't work. Okay. Oh, the B I B L E. Oh, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B I B L E. Now the German influence. I didn't. I didn't leave that in th that time. The German influence is. Oh, the B-I-B-L-E, yeah, that's the book for me. <laughs> that's your clue. 704 is the question. How much? Chapters. Oh, that was a good guess. Wrong. <laughs> I, what's that? What are pages? Oh, another terrific guess. 704. Wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. You'll never. 700. The question is, how many languages has the Bible, both Old and New Testament, been translated into? 704 languages. It's amazing. If you put just the New Testament on top of that, that's another 1,551 languages. The Bible must be important. We keep translating it and getting it out so people can read it. We teach it in Sunday school to little kids. We teach it to old people who want to look at it again. A grandson came up to his granddad and said, I know what, I know what the Bible means. <laughs> granddad said, really, you know what the Bible means? Yes, I know. Okay, tell me what, what does it mean? It means basic instruction before leaving earth. Not bad, not bad. We get down to looking at things. I, I kind of got into this uh, because I did some research and I was, I was trying to think of, uh, maybe some of you bought it even, the Reader's Digest Bible. Does anybody ever hear of that? You know, Reader's Digest was really good at compressing things and, and compacting them. The books uh, would be Reader's Digest books. They did that with the Bible. They reduced it 40%. I don't know what, how they did it, but their experts were able to get it down, pare it down. The reason that kind of ticked in my memory bank was when I read Mark's Gospel, he must have taken a, well, no, he couldn't have taken a lesson from them, but he uses their technique. He just gets down to bare bones. The gospel for this day. Jesus came from Galilee. He was baptized by John. The heavens were torn open. A voice from heaven came. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. And then... The Spirit forced him into the wilderness. He was tempted for 40 days by Satan. He was with the wild beasts. The angels came and ministered him. When John was put into prison, then he went preaching. And he proclaimed the, nearest, the kingdom of God. The four points of the sermon. The, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom is near. Repent. Believe the gospel. Bang, 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 bang. He seems in such a hurry, such a rush. And so I want to slow down a little bit today. And I want to focus on the last two parts of what Jesus was talking about, preaching about, when he went from village to village to village. The last two parts, repent and believe the good news. And I want to try and redeem that word repent. Seems to me 
we've put it into a rather negative cast. Repent. And uh, I, I, think, I think we should have a, a view that's a little more positive about that. Repent really means change direction. Change direction in life. And so I want to I want to use an illustration, and you have to do a little thinking with me, a little imagining. You have to imagine before you had your GPS, before you could talk to your phone, and it would tell you how to get to wherever you wanted to go. We used maps. Remember that? Now I don't know how you did it in your family, but here's the way we did it. I'm the driver. She's the navigator, co-pilot, whatever she wanted for a title. And as we're traveling on new territory, you read the map and let me know where we got to turn, especially through towns. Now, I don't know if you've had this experience, but <laughs> traveling 70 or 75 miles an hour through a town that I've never been in, and my navigator says, turn right. Except I'm in the left lane and there's three lanes over. It did cause for some conversation. We go through that. Well, a map. Sometimes, now this didn't happen to us, but I've heard this happen Somebody was being the co-pilot and was reading the map and the pages got flipped a little and they couldn't find, they didn't, uh, they just couldn't find the road or the turn or where they wanted to get to. Finally, they discovered they had to get back to the right map. Repentance is like that. When you're using the wrong map, you're going to get to the wrong place from God's point of view. I mean, what's success? What's happiness? What's what really counts in life? You know, all those things that we followed, the roadmap to success, how to have a happy life, how to find the, what you want out of life. What happens if you get to that and it's a dead end? You thought if you had more toys, you'd be happier. And so you had lots of toys. You could do all kinds of things. You bought all kinds of equipment and things. But in the end, they were just a lot of stuff that you had to take care of, and eventually you got rid of it. Did you ever do that? Repentance, Jesus says, is turning around. It's getting to go in a new direction. I'm very thankful for my friends who are in any recovery programs. Recovery programs have been tremendously successful helping people get on the right road in their life. And I've learned an awful lot from them. And one of the things that they teach and talk about is it's a one-day program for the rest of your life. It's one day to be successful at staying sober. It's one day to be successful at not using drugs. It's one day for whatever issue problem that you're dealing with. It's today. And staying on the road and staying in the direction that you need to go. And uh, that kind of understanding and the support that one gets from other people who are sharing the journey, it's important. It's important we get together and we share each week that we remember who we are and the kind of road we're following and the path and who it is that's leading us and directing us. That's why we follow Jesus and we worship him and thank him. I used to have a wonderful illustration that I, I didn't bring and I couldn't use because we don't have good camera work. It's a small piece of plastic. It's uh, about four inches long and it's called a rattleback. And it illustrates uh, uh, something about human beings and it comes from the world of physics. So I found it interesting. If I spin that little piece of plastic counterclockwise, and pretty soon we'll have generations that'll have to figure out what counterclockwise is. Everybody's digital these days. But counterclockwise, it spins beautifully. It just 
goes and goes. It's amazing. If, however, I want to say that's the wrong direction, I want to spin it clockwise, an amazing thing happens. I spin it, it turns, it suddenly rattles, it stops, and it goes back to spinning counterclockwise. Now, you physicists would understand it. It's got a slight curve inside. And that slight curve means that it's always going to be uh, that kind of uh, object that when I spin it clockwise, it'll, it'll stop and it'll want to go back to its own way. That's how we are. God says you should follow this path. And we get on it for a while. But it's so easy to go a different direction. It's so easy to say, no, I'm going to go not that way, but my way. That happens. And that's why we come back over and over again to needing each other and to saying, are we following the roadmap? And who is the one that's going to lead us? Jesus is that one. Repentance. It's a good word. Now, Martin Luther has written a hundred volumes of stuff, and I think most of you have heard of the 95 Theses. Has anybody ever read those 95? They're really boring. You did! Oh, good for you. They're boring as all get out, aren't they? They are just so inured and so, so time-conditioned and built into the society he was part of, and it's, a, it's a, a look at that particular culture at that time. But the very first one is interesting. Martin Luther said, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said, repent, he willed that the entire life of believers be one of repentance of continually turning and saying, are we on the right road? Are we following the right directions? Are we going the way Jesus wants us to go? And that's a daily event. You know, Christianity is really a one-day experience repeated for your lifetime. We keep doing it over and over again. We start off new and fresh. We can confess, and we then find that the road is open. Repentance, it's a good word. And the final point that Jesus made, not only is the time fulfilled and the kingdom is near, repent, change direction, find the direction that God wants for you, believe the good news. That's what he ended with, believe the good news. It's something that's positive, something that builds us up, something that sets us on the right road. And we still teach each other that and proclaim that. Believe it. Believe the good news that he brings. Believe the truth that he offers. It's what builds us up. This is the first Sunday in Lent. Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. We're going to be looking now at the events of Good Friday and Easter. It's coming. We get to think about all that God has done for us. It's one of those reminders. We tell the old, old story that we've all heard so often. And it reminds us of what Christ has done for each one of us. I moved into uh, Oro Valley 20 years and a few months ago. It's pretty amazing. Been here for 20 years. And I got to meet a few of the neighbors. I, I still haven't met some of them, but... My next door neighbor, he just moved into and got to visiting with him and found out all about him and he had an interesting career. He was into business and he'd been very successful. And uh, he had lots of other experiences in life and uh, we, we heard about and shared about them. And, and, uh, and so it was uh, kind of a, you know, that process of getting to know people. And he said his life was changed when he graduated from high school. Now, he said he was a pretty good student, and he wanted to go to college. Problem was they didn't have any money. <laughs> kind of a common problem. 
And he said the day he graduated from high school, he had a visit from one of his teachers. His teacher drove into the yard and drove down and got out of the car and had a conversation that changed his life. He said, if you want to go to school and if you get accepted, I'm willing to scholarship you. He offered him a scholarship and he renewed it. It changed his life. And even 40, 50, 60, I don't know how many years passed that, he still remembered the gift and the giver. It changed his life. You and I, when we come to this time of the year, we believe the good news because we keep thinking about the gift and the giver. That Christ has come and he's offered peace and hope and joy in his kingdom. He offers forgiveness of sins and the opening to the future. We sing that song, the B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. Yeah, that's true. It's got the promises, it's got the hope, it's got the truth, it's got the message from Christ. And with the power of the Spirit working in your heart and in your mind, it builds us up. It says, hang on, keep going down the right road. Don't turn around, don't turn off. You know, the ditch is on both sides. Stay on the straight and narrow. That's what Christ comes. Not to say you're condemned or that you've broken the rules or that you've changed the laws and haven't been up to what you should do. It's rather the good news. Believe the good news that God loves you, cares about you. When life gets difficult, when times are hard, when you've gone through bad things, somebody cared. And you and I have that word, that message, that truth that we continually share. That's Mark's gospel. He gets it down to just the basics, just the basics that you never forget that we need to have that direction following Christ, not our own route. And you and I always remember we're loved. Peter taught us at the end of his, uh, at the end of his book that we should always uh, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen. Thank you.
people of God, what do we believe to be true? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, let us pray for our church, our world, our nation and community, and all of us who are in your grace, mercy, power, and presence. God of love and power, send us your people beyond boundaries to proclaim your grace. May our life and our witness be a source of refreshment for thirsty souls. Strengthen our voices that all people can know and believe that Jesus is truly the Savior of the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord God of power and healing, we are still frightened by the coronavirus epidemic. You hold our future and we trust you. Help us not to panic and do foolish things. Give us wisdom and counsel to live with strength and courage and be an example of faith to others. Give wisdom to those who lead the efforts to stop the outbreaks, deliver the vaccine, and bring healing to those who are afflicted and suffering. Protect the caregivers and those on the front lines of testing, vaccinating, and care. God of all, we also ask your healing grace and power for all who have been affected by the recent storms and cold weather. Bless them as they recover and give them comfort. We pray especially for our Saddlebrook leaders Pastors Wayne, Jim, and Paul, and also for Alex, Alice, and Hank Guy. Pray especially for Connie Kloppenbach's mother. Lord Jesus, we need your help here. Give us at this Lenten time a fresh experience of your healing power among us. Restore hope to those who remain in the depths of depression or despair. Bring mercy and relief to those who are injured, sick, or suffering. And in particular to our friends right here in our own Resurrection Fellowship. May they sense our love, concern, and prayers. Hear us, O God. Our mercy is great. We pray for our children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and the children of our family and friends. Keep them safe, strong, and may they know how much we and you love them. And for the dear children of the world that no one else prays for, we pray for them today. 
Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. Confident that the Holy Spirit of Jesus intercedes for us, and with his power, grace, and strength, we can accomplish more than we can ever dream, think, or ask. We bring to you these prayers and those unspoken, and yet deep in our heart and spirit. In the name of Jesus, our dear friend, loving Lord, and our Redeemer. Amen. Think about God's love, think about God's goodness, think about God's grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our dear Lord's love. How could I forget His love? How could I forget God's mercy? God satisfies. God satisfies. Satisfies my desires. Think about God's love, think about God's goodness, think about God's grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heaven. So great is the measure of our dear Lord's love. Great is the measure of our dear Lord's love. Even when I've strayed away, God's love has sent me out and found me. God satisfies, God satisfies my desire. Think about God's love, think about God's goodness. Think about God's grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our dear Lord's love. Great is the measure, great is the measure, great is the measure. As we prepare for our communion, I would invite you to open your packet. It takes a, a minute sometimes to do. I have lots of trouble with that little top piece. And after you've opened it up, we'll do our liturgy. And at the end of the Lord's Prayer, we'll consume the elements. Hopefully you got an easy packet today.
Join with me in our liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto everlasting life. God's peace be with you. Amen. For announcements today, uh, thanks for those who volunteer to be a part of the Every Week experience, taking on various roles. There's always sign up that's available, and thank you for choosing to do that. It's very, it's very helpful. Uh, the one announcement that I want to make concerning Pastor Wayne. Pastor Wayne has health issues. He and Pat are processing what's going to be happening. I would ask that you respect their privacy and their time and give them the space to work through those things that they're dealing with at this time. I am confident that there will be communication coming out uh, from them and they need to make whatever decisions are appropriate for them. I hope you understand. Now receive the benediction for this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Spirit, we are to be the presence of Christ in our daily lives so that others will follow him. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.